When you play Mario Kart Online, do you ever feel like they give you certain courses a little too often? After having played the most recent installment a ton since launch day, that's what I've been noticing. As of right now, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has 96 tracks to race on, the most any Mario Kart game has ever included. With that, you'd think they'd give you a variety of courses to race on, but if I were to go into a random online lobby, they'd give me options to choose from, including Dry Dry Desert, and just two games later we get Dry Dry Desert. Or how about another lobby, where we get Electrodrome, and Electrodrome, and Electrodrome, and Electrodrome, and Electrodrome? My friend Bibbs and I started noticing these repetitive patterns with how the game was randomly choosing its courses, and we're not the only ones. Back in 2018, Reddit user ThopterValid noticed the same thing, and after doing a test involving playing 250 races while writing down the courses the game would offer up, Thop found that there were a number of courses that would show up almost every time a new game was gonna start. Heck, a few tracks didn't even show up at all. But keep in mind, that was back when the game had just been released with 48 tracks. As of 2023, the Booster Course Pass, which would double the number of tracks, was released. Meaning that there'd be a lot more courses to choose from. Curious, Bibbs and I had wondered if we'd get a similar outcome, so we did our own test. But we did a little more than 250. There's a lot of math involved, but it breaks down like this. During an online lobby, you'll be given a set of three courses to choose from, supposedly at random, as well as a button to choose a completely random course. If this three course selection were to display different courses every time, and say we wanted each track from the list of 96 to appear 10 times, we'd need to have raced 320 times, which would give us 960 track options. But considering there may be some overlapping, and it won't perfectly give us three new courses each time, we'll just add on some extra races. With our goal in mind, we'd set off to find answers, to see whether or not the course selections would actually be random. It'd be pretty fair, but after a short time, there'd be some early signs of potential favoritism. We'd see some courses show up more than others. For example, in our first session, we started off with GameCube's Dry Dry Desert in the lead. After 49 games, we'd see this course appear 6 times. That may not sound like an absurd number, but who's to say that courses like this wouldn't come up more often later down the line? After all, we had no idea what way the data we would collect was gonna go. More races were upon us, and after seeing a number of repeats, we'd start to come up with some weird theories. What if it's something stupid like, it depends on the time of day? To get that specific, we'd have to do it like 10,000 times. Like, logging each time we played. This game started at 4.15 and it ended at 4.16. The moon was waning. <laughs> <laughs> Jupiter was in line with Venus! <laughs> I ate cinnamon toast crunch for breakfast that day. <laughs> Oh my god! Jokingly, of course. But you know what isn't a joke? Water Park appearing five times in 18 races. That's like getting it once every four games. What was interesting was that despite the game showing that course that many times, nobody was picking it. Sure, if a course was pretty popular, it'd make sense for it to show up at least a bit more often. A lot more than, say, Bone Dry Dunes. Which, spoiler alert, would end up being tied for last place with two other tracks. One of which I'll reveal later, because I'm honestly very surprised it's last. Also, unlike Thop's original test, a new subset of courses would appear in the booster course pass. The Tour Maps. Ripped straight from the mobile game Mario Kart Tour, they'd offer a bunch of new tracks to race, including cities based on real life, as well as a handful of other original places we'd be seeing a lot of these maps pop up alongside the original Mario Kart 8 tracks from the Wii U. It would be a nice change-up from the tracks we've been playing on since 2014, but when you're force-fed Madrid three times in a row until someone picks it, that's when I start to have a problem. It wouldn't be uncommon. There'd be a few times a course was either shown two races in a row, or at least very close together. Like Mount Wario. You want me to do what? 
getting a lot of the same course selections is one thing, but you also have to factor in what actually gets played. A course that would be a lot more popular within the lobby would have a greater chance of being selected compared to one that, say, only one or two people would choose. But what I haven't told you yet was that there was something we didn't have control over. For almost every online match, no matter what the course was, it would select the 150cc mode. This generally affects your speed, with 150cc being the most common for online play. I mean, I'm not saying I'm disappointed we didn't get to play on 50cc, but even the super fast 200cc and the flipped mirror mode only made themselves present once. In that regard, there's not much variety, but if it's what the people want, what about what I want? Maybe I want an all Rainbow Road lobby. I had thrown the idea around once, but there was one fabled course selection throughout all this where every option was a different Rainbow Road. I don't think I've actually seen this before in any online lobby, so shoutouts to Nintendo for putting this one together. But we'd have to stop at some point. So, after a combined 346 races, we had to assemble the data together in one big spreadsheet to find out if Mario Kart Online truly has a rigged course selection. After a ton of work, we had our answer. It may surprise you, but the random course choices are not actually rigged. Right off the bat, with all the races we did, we had every single track appear at least four times. So already it's off to a better start compared to Thop's earlier test, which had three courses that didn't even show up once. In fact, those three tracks from Thop's test showed up for us around 10 times each. The three tracks that we had tied for last place, each showing up four times, were Tours Athens Dash, Mario Kart 8's Bone Dry Dunes, and Mario Kart 64's Chaco Mountain. That last one, I'm honestly very surprised was in the bottom three. But to reinforce our claim of the core selections being random, the data we collected showed that the game pretty evenly distributed the courses, with a few outliers on both the low and high ends. If this was completely random, to where we'd get an even number of times a course was selected, then we should expect each one to show up around 10 to 11 times, given the number of times we had courses appear. As a matter of fact, a lot of courses would hit this mark exactly, with most others being within just a few digits. We had 11 questionable data points, with the lowest of the outliers being the few courses that got 4, and Dry Dry Desert taking the top spot with 21. Now considering we only had the game run through a roughly 1,000 course selection, we didn't exactly hit the law of large numbers, as we only did 346 races compared to, say, 10,000 or something crazy, which based on that law could even out the outliers. But the majority of our data is accurate to how you would expect random distribution to work. Also, with the amount of times certain categories of tracks appeared, versus how we'd expect them to appear, the numbers turned out pretty damn close. For example, if the courses in both standard Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and the booster course tracks were randomly distributed, it'd be 50% for each. Our data show that the ratio was just slightly off of that, with the booster course tracks making up 49% of what we saw, while non-booster received the remaining 51. In fact, the only tracks that showed up more than they were expected to, categorically, were the Mario Kart Tour Real City courses. Perhaps there's at least potential for a little favoritism for that, given it's from their mobile game that they're pushing out. But overall, the selections for the current version of the game with all its DLC really does feel a lot more random than it was around the time of its launch. Now that was just for the game's random selection of courses, but what about the ones that had actually get picked? Sure, there'd be a handful of courses with high appearance rates, but it would not accurately reflect what we played on. Dry Dry Desert from Mario Kart Double Dash showed up the most, with a whopping 21 appearances, but even then we only played on it a collective 5 times. There were others that also didn't do so well. Water Park with 17 appearances, we only played on twice. Now even though every course in the game showed up in the list, would you believe me if I told you there were only three tracks that were never played on at all? 3DS Music Park, Bone Dry Dunes, and the Mario Kart 8 version of Rainbow Road. 
maybe it's not so hard to believe when, again, there are 93 other tracks the game can choose from. But you know what I have a hard time believing? The fact that 3DS DK Jungle was played 69% of the times we'd see it. <laughs> what? So why is it that even though the numbers check out, it still feels like they give you certain courses more often? It could be that there are times it'll give you repeats, but after playing enough games, it'll wind up evening out in the end. Though it could also be that as humans, we'll start to notice a pattern, and even though you could play a few games in between, and then have a previous track show up again, we end up tricking ourselves into thinking that we get it way more often than it actually happens. That, or it could just be that we've been basically playing the same game for a decade at this point. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Super Turbo Plus. And even though the game has 572 tracks, it's still giving me Dry Dry Desert! Now if you'd like to check out our spreadsheet and documents, I'll have a link for that in the description below. I'd also like to give a shout out to Bibbs for helping put this whole experiment together, without whom this video wouldn't be possible. He's a really good friend of mine, and a talented competitive Smash Bros. Melee player. You can check out his YouTube channel here. Also, big ups to Thopter Thalid for the original test of the game, whose idea led us to make this happen. But with that being said, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care, and peace.